Hey guys, this is Robert Daly with Daily Woodworks and the Recreational Woodworker. I have to get this piece of furniture to, well, I have to get this piece of furniture from Texas to Indiana in one piece. How am I gonna do that? Today I'm gonna show you the process of packing a piece of furniture for freight shipping. It's gonna involve making a skid for a forklift or just to get it up on a truck or trailer. We're gonna wrap it up in lots of padding to protect it and get it there in one piece. Now this is not sponsored, but I use U-Ship for all of my shipping. I've tried freight carriers, I've tried um, like full on true, like hot shot shipping companies. U-Ship has been, U-Ship has been my best option so far. The prices are fair. You're dealing with independent contractors who the person who picks up your load 90% of the time is the person who owns that truck and trailer and is incentivized to get it there in one piece and normally does a great job. Um, I've had one issue with the shipment taking long, much longer than expected one time, but that's mostly due to the whole COVID thing. So let's go through the process. I'll show you what you need and how to do this in a great way that's gonna get your piece of furniture there in one piece. And this works whether you're shipping something you built for sale or if you're shipping your furniture, because sometimes that happens. So here we go, let's get started. Hey guys, before we get started today, I would like to invite you to go to the recreationalwoodworker.com. This is my website and blog that has all of my woodworking plans, how to tutorials, jigs, furniture, shop projects, tool reviews, everything that you need to know about being a woodworker. We have an extensive blog where it's easy to find the essential clamps you need, how to build awesome tabletops, and upcycling furniture projects. All those different things that you might want to do to be a woodworker. So go check out the recreationalwoodworker.com and let's get back to our video. So I apologize for the fan noise in advance. It's summer in Texas, I'm gonna have the AC going. Unfortunately, my brand new microphone that I got to make my audio a lot better broke after like the second use, so I barely got any videos done using that. So hopefully through the magic of post-production, we can get this background noise out a little bit. So I have laid out four two by fours. I might need five. Two by fours are cheap. I try to just keep about 10 in my shop at any given time so I can throw together pallets, jigs, fixtures, anything, you know, just kind of like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where, you know, you always carry a towel with you. Same principle being a woodworker. Always have a two by four laying around. Always have several two by fours laying around. They really are basic building blocks. So I've got four here and now I just need to determine how long I need them to be. So this is my piece. I keep it covered in my shop just to keep it protected. Um, this finished length of this piece of furniture is, whoops, hooked on there. Stay hooked on there. The finished piece of this piece of furniture is right at 74 inches. I want my pallet to be bigger than that. That way it has a buffer all the way around it. So 74, I'm going to cut everything. I'm just gonna go seven feet and 84 inches 10 more inches than needed. That way I can have about five inches on each side. And that way I don't risk banging up an edge, something like that whenever it's getting maneuvered. And that way nothing can get that close, close to it in the truck or trailer. So let's cut everything set seven feet or 84 inches and I'll show you the next step. Okay, I figure I'd draw this out for you real quick so you can see how it's gonna work. This is gonna be the front view. So I'm gonna have a two by four on end here, here, and my pallet jack is 30 inches, so I need to make sure that inside dimension, I think it needs to be like 28. I'm gonna go double check that real quick. Our inside dimension needs to be 28 inches because my forklift jacks are 27 inches. This way the forks can go in between here. We're gonna put those on edge, and I'm just gonna put a two by four on top of it in three different places so there's plenty of room to go. And then I'm going to put screws in to hold it in place super easy. I don't use nails because nails don't really hold. The side of it's gonna look like this. 
I'm gonna 45 those ends just a little bit on the two by four just to make it it's just it doesn't dig in the stuff that way. And then I'm gonna have say hi to my daughter. She's running from her mama right now. Okay, they're gone. Okay, and the side of my palette are, is gonna look like this, where my piece of furniture sits on top of it, and that way it ends kind of right here. So it's gonna have about five inches of overhang here, and I'm gonna have a few inches of overhang there to keep it all protected. So your palette's gonna be a little bit bigger than your finished piece of furniture. So that's, that's the science of building a palette. Let's go. So let me walk you through what I'm doing. I'm basically, I'm cutting everything to size to be oversized for my dimensions based on that little piece of paper I showed you a minute ago. I then lay out my boards and I come in about four inches on one side just to make sure that I have overhang. And then attach with each spreader with one screw on both ends. So that's easy enough. Um, the reason I only put one screw instead of two screws is so I can square this up later. I didn't measure over. I know my finished workpiece is 74 inches. So I actually make the two end pieces, the two end spreaders that the, the kennel or the furniture is actually gonna sit on, I make those two inches bigger, about 76. This gives it room to sit on and then gives it just that little extra buffer. That way no corner of the furniture is actually hanging out in the space and risking damage. After I attach both ends, I find the center point, attach a spreader in the center, again with just one screw in each part. And then at that point, I square it up. Now this is a palette, it's not perfect. This thing's about a quarter inch out of square. I just got it close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades, right? So after it's squared up, I then go back and put two screws in every board and put my center spreader in and that is my palette. Now I'm ready to put my furniture on my palette. So let's get that done. Okay, so wrapping up this dog kennel. It's a lot of work. I worked up a sweat. I don't like sweating. Uh, that's why I have AC in my shop. So here's what you do is you have to get the kennel on the palette. The best way I found to do that is to use this. This is your best friend, an inch and a quarter, inch and a half dowel rod. I use this to move all kinds of heavy stuff in my shop by myself. You see my little helper, he's able to put this in position. I'm able to roll a three, 400 pound piece of furniture, super easy with it. So you get it positioned on the pallet. Once it's positioned on the pallet, you just kind of center it so it's covered off places. And then I just run two inch screws right through the bottom of this piece of furniture into the pallet. You might be thinking, oh no, you just run this nice piece of furniture. In some cases, yes, that's true. But in this case, this is the dog kennel. My customers are gonna put trays, dog beds, mattresses, all kinds of stuff on the floor of that kennel. So two holes for screws to keep it safe and secure during transit are no issue at all. And if they are, it's an easy enough hole to put a little bit of wood putty in, 
touch up paint or stain, and boom, it's done. Other times I'll actually tie it to if I don't have a good anchoring point on my piece of furniture. Sometimes I might install a temporary anchoring point that will get removed later on to anchor it to the palette. So there's all kinds of ways to anchor it to your palette. After you do that, you just wrap it up in cellophane. That's cheap, you can get that at Home Depot, you can get it on Amazon. I actually link to my preferred plastic wrap because surprisingly, there are different levels of quality that you can get with your plastic wrap. And that's an Amazon affiliate link, so use that. The next thing I use is good old carpet padding. Carpet padding is cheap, it's readily available, and it is the perfect packing and moving material. You can cut it in various sizes, you can tear it in different sizes. Sorry, I need to close this from the center real quick. There you go. Thanks. There's various sizes of carpet padding. You can get big rolls of it. I think the big roll that you saw me use was, I did like two pieces of furniture with it before this and it only cost me like 40 bucks. That's way cheaper than any other packing thing. Wrap it in that, wrap it in plastic wrap again, and boom, you're done. It's gonna ride in an enclosed trailer. Uh, my shippers normally wrap it in moving blankets themselves. It gets there, it's safe and sound. It's the best way I found to package stuff. So that is how we prepare our items for shipment across the nation. So whether you are building custom furniture for sale and wondering how to get it from point A to point B, this is how I do it. I use a company called U-Ship. There's a few others. I know uh, there's a, uh, oh, what is the next one? The Uber, Uber Freight might be a good one, but that's the one I use. It's not sponsored. I pay them money every time I ship. They don't give me anything for saying that, but I'm happy, reasonably happy with their service. So that's who I've been using. If that changes, I'll let you know. Um, and then that's how we do it. So thanks for watching. Um, give this video a like, a share, a subscribe. Uh, dislike it if you disliked it. Anything helps those algorithms. So thanks for watching. Go to the recreationalwoodworker.com and see more about what we do. Bye. Bye.